Witness stand in the lawsuit accusing him of costing investors millions. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Cook. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto. The Tesla and Twitter CEO appeared in a San Francisco courtroom today for part one of his testimony. Musk is accused of securities fraud over a 2018 tweet that falsely claimed he had secured funding to take Tesla private. He defended his actions today, testifying that just because he says something, it doesn't mean people will believe him or act on it. Yeah, some complicated legal issues are certainly at play during this trial. Here to help us break it all down is Bay Area criminal defense attorney Tony Brass. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you give us a little insight into what laws Musk is officially accused of violating here? Well, what the federal law wants to do, the, the intent is to protect investors from being manipulated. And uh, investors, when they look at the money they've put into a company, the stock they've bought, they are constantly analyzing the value of that stock by what is happening with the company. Is the company going to invent a new car? Are they going to invent new technology? How are they moving forward? What is my stock, what is going to happen with my stock in the future? So what he's accused of doing is manipulating the market by getting, giving the impression to investors that he's going to take Tesla. I know Tesla has gone sort of back and forth. So he's now, he gave the impression in 2018 that he was going to take Tesla private and that impacts the value of the stock that people were holding at the time. So part of Elon Musk's defense essentially boils down to this. He's saying, what I said was untrue, but I thought it was true when I said it. So is that really a valid legal argument? Yeah, I think his defense actually breaks down into two parts. There's the, I thought it was true when I said it. I have the funding. I have the information that tells me I can afford to do this and I intend to do it. And then I guess he's going to say, well, that information was incorrect. I was under a misapprehension at the time. That is, uh, that is a, a valid legal defense. But it also seems like what he's saying is that when I communicate via Twitter with a character limit, you can't take that information seriously and base your investment strategy on that. And, and almost with the joke about 420, he's trying to say like, well, what I say on Twitter might be utter nonsense. But that's, you know, that's very difficult to to accept because he's not just a, he's a brand name unto himself and he's clearly invested in his own credibility, his own reputation. And in when he, when he talks about the future of the company he owns, the, the company he's so closely associated with, that that what he says has meaning and investors absolutely are going to rely on. Yeah, I mean, let's go back to the credibility part of this, because the tweet at the center of this case includes a reference to marijuana, as you mentioned. Today, Musk testified that he did that to amuse his girlfriend. Do you see think his seemingly impulsive approach to major business decisions could have any impact on the outcome here? Well, I think this. Uh, the, the real question is, are people going to think he's just making up whatever he can uh, to get out of criminal liability here? And the, the truth is, is that being reckless does establish liability mm -hmm. in this case. So, so you, it, it's not just that you began with the intent to defraud, but if you were reckless in misleading people, you can also have liability. And so saying that he's making a joke on Twitter, a joke that nobody seems to be in on, uh, and you know, we are, we all text every day. We text things sarcastically. We are all experts in how to mark our written words that we're kidding, that we're joking with emojis and, and, and other things. You know, this, this really doesn't seem to have any of those uh, indications. Yeah, it's a little different when you're Elon Musk and you're tweeting about Twitter, which is a very, or Tesla, which is a very powerful company right now. And, he, and he's also invested in the credibility of Twitter. Right. So, so to, to it's it's a hard sell, mm -hmm. at least from from my point of view, without being involved in the case directly, it is a it is a very hard sell that he just jokes like this when it comes to money. Like so many people say, I never joke about money. I don't think he's someone who does either. All right, Tony Brass, thank you so much for joining us. Well, stay long.